Uh, let's talk about Karen Hill. I just read some of this stuff. That was Henry Hill's wife, in other words. She was born in 1946 as Karen Friedman to a Jewish family out on Long Island. Nice neighborhood. In 1965, she was working as a dental hygienist and she met Hill. As it showed in the film, they were on a double date. But her girlfriend wasn't dating Tommy DeSimone, the one played by Joe Pesci. She was dating Paul Verio Jr., the boss's son. Um, they didn't get along well, and then eventually she said this. She said of Henry, he could go places. He had money. He was an action guy. There I was. I would do little schmendricks. They were going to be accountants. If we were lucky, we'd go to Chinese food at the mall. While Henry, I would go to the Copa, and we'd get a ringside table, and people would always look at me and thought, who is she? They eloped to North Carolina, where the marriage requirements were a little less strict. Uh, later on, they had a Jewish wedding. Karen really didn't have a clue of what was going on. She was a middle-class girl, you know, about the mafia and the Lucchese family and all that stuff. But, you know, it, it all became pretty clear after a while. She thought Henry was a bricklayer, a low-level union official in the bricklayers' union. Karen uh, eventually got wise to these things, and uh, she overcame her, her reservations because the money was pouring in. And she said uh, his lifestyle was glamorous, and she liked it, and she let it go on. In the meantime, they started using a lot of coke. Henry was selling it, using it, buying it. And they would have people over to the house for these cocaine-fueled parties during these parties. People would have sex in plain sight. They'd use their daughter Gina's Miss Piggy mirror to do cocaine. And sometimes they'd even offer a snort to the kids. I, I think what that means is uh, the guest would offer a snort to the kid, is, I'm guessing. So while Henry's in jail, Tommy D. Simone reportedly beat her up and then tried to rape her. Meanwhile, Karen is having a full-out affair with Pauly Vario, the boss, while Henry's in prison. So Vario found out about this attempted rape from De Simone because it had pissed him off because De Simone knew he was having an affair with, with Karen. So it was disrespect. And there was a lot of other stuff, and he ended up dead, of course, in 1979. And they were moved to Omaha, Nebraska. They were re re relocated several times throughout the 1980s and 90s. Finally, they got expelled from the program because Henry started dealing dope again. Karen uh, and Henry separated in 1989 uh, and were divorced. Good evening. December 11th may go down as the day of the biggest robbery in our country's history, and it happened right here in New York. Somewhere between 3 and $5 million in cash and valuables was taken from the Lufthansa cargo terminal out at Kennedy Airport. And the law enforcement officers say that it was carried off with such precision and such daring, you almost have to consider it an inside job. Here's Anthony Preisendorf. The Red Baron was caught napping, and not by amateurs either. This band of robbers had everything down pat and made the entire caper from beginning to end go as smoothly as Swiss clockwork. Shortly before four this morning, while the moon was on the wane, a black Ford van slipped out of the shadows in the cargo area and stopped at a padlock gate of the adjacent Argentine Airlines. One snip with heavy bolt cutters, and that security checkpoint might as well not have been there. The band of robbers, six and perhaps seven men wearing ski masks, drove around to the loading dock. When they jumped one Lufthansa worker, his screams made a security guard inside open the door. That was the end of security. The gunmen rushed inside and knew exactly where to go. They forced the night supervisor to disconnect the silent police alarm and then take them to the high-value room on the first floor. The other eight workers who were on duty at the time were herded into a third-floor cafeteria and handcuffed. One worker who resisted was pistol whipped. His scalp needed five stitches. After the supervisor had opened the safe for the thieves, the rest was duck soup. They took 30 shipments of gold, pearls, jewelry, and checks. They also knew just where to look for the three million dollars in used money that had been flown in on Friday from Frankfurt, intended for delivery later in the day to the Chase Manhattan Bank. Used money, in bank parlance, is money that's already been in circulation, and more importantly, money for which no record of serial numbers exists. Needless to say, the Red Baron's face was a little redder than usual today, but officials pointed out, he'll survive. It'll have one impact, I'm sure, that we have to again uh, reassess uh, our security. Mm -hmm. But it is as good as it humanly can be done. So, you know, robberies are something that happens.
The big unanswered question at this stage of the investigation, and perhaps you could call it a $3 million unanswered question, is why all these valuables were allowed to remain here at the cargo terminal all weekend instead of being shipped off to the banks as they were supposed to be. At JFK, this is Anthony Preisendorf, Channel 5 News. I get <laughs>